To the modern mind, many of the medical treatments of the past may seem barbaric, cruel, and primitive. In a time when very little was understood about how the human body worked, diseases were often believed to be caused by evil spirits or bad luck, and treatments would often do more harm than good. Here are my choices for five of the most barbaric and dangerous medical practices from history. Number 5. Trepanation Trepanation is a surgical procedure in which a hole is drilled or scraped into a human skull, thus exposing the brain to air in the belief that this will treat a wide variety of ailments. There is evidence that trepanation has been carried out since Neolithic times, and evidence of the practice has been found in cave paintings and at ancient burial sites. Those behaving abnormally might find themselves forced to have holes drilled in their heads in the belief that this will release the evil spirits causing their problems. It was also used as a catch-all treatment for seizures, epilepsy, and even headaches, and the small piece of bones that was cut out would usually be kept and worn as a lucky charm to keep evil spirits away. The practice seems to have been very common. At one 8,000-year-old burial site in France, 40 of the 120 skulls found contained trepanation holes, and in total 1,500 skulls from the Neolithic period have been found across the world containing the holes, representing as many as 10% of all Stone Age skulls. While it may sound bizarre, the practice did have some uses. Evidence points to it being used as an emergency surgery to treat head wounds, creating the holes to remove damaged pieces of bone from the head, and cleaning out blood which will often pool under the skull after a serious head wound, injuries that were no doubt common when weapons used were blunt instruments like slings and clubs. The practice seems to have been used all over the world. In ancient Greece, Hippocrates wrote specific instructions on how to carry out the procedure, and in the Middle Ages, trepanation was still being used as a general cure for health issues, treating everything from skull fractures to seizures. In a time before modern medicine and antibiotics, you might think that few survived the procedure, however the majority of the skulls found with the holes show signs of healing, which suggests that the survival rate was in fact very high. Surprisingly, trepanation has not gone away, and it's still used to treat certain types of hematomas. There are even groups of people who practice trepanation today in the belief that it can increase brain blood volume and achieve a higher state of consciousness, as well as treat psychological ailments. Number 4. Bloodletting Bloodletting originated in ancient Egypt and is the most commonly performed medical treatment in history. It involves draining blood from a patient in order to prevent or cure illness and was believed to balance the bodily humours and thus maintain good health. At the time it was thought that most disease was caused by an imbalance of the four humours, which were blood, phlegm, black bile, and yellow bile. Blood was thought to be the dominant of the four humours, and that balance could be restored by removing excess blood. After it was discovered that arteries held blood instead of air as was commonly believed, surgeons thought that blood was created and used and not circulated around the body. This belief led to the idea that blood could therefore stagnate in different areas of the body and thus cause illness. Treatments became somewhat elaborate, with different amounts of blood depending on the patient's age and size and even the weather conditions at the time. Generally speaking, the worse the illness was, the more blood needed to be removed. Even as surgeons began to understand more about the way the body worked, the practice continued to be used. In fact, it was so widespread that barber surgeons sprung up all over Europe and the well-known red and white striped pole still on display at barbershops is derived from bloodletting services offered by the barber surgeons of old. The red of the pole symbolised the blood, while the white represented bandages. In addition to shaves and haircuts, your local barber might also offer bloodletting, tooth removal, and even amputations. Bloodletting was thought to cure a huge variety of ailments, from diabetes and gangrene through to acne and asthma, However, it may have unintentionally been useful in treating hypertension by temporarily reducing blood pressure by reducing the volume of blood in the body. However, in the vast majority of cases, the practice was actually harmful to patients rather than beneficial, since blood loss can weaken patients and increase the likelihood of infections. A wide variety of methods were used, with the most common being simply removing blood by cutting an external vein in the arm or neck. However, more elaborate devices also existed, including spring-loaded lancets and a bloodletting tool called a scarificator, which became popular in the 19th century. Leeches were also popular, with some surgeons choosing to place up to 50 leeches on a patient at the same time in order to achieve the desired amount of blood loss. In fact, they became so popular that in the 1830s, France imported over 40 million leeches solely for medical purposes. 
Bizarre as this may sound, leeches are actually still used today during certain types of reconstructive surgery, as the leeches produce a special enzyme in their saliva which can prevent clotting. Bloodletting began to fall out of fashion in the late 1800s as medical knowledge began to improve dramatically. However, it is still used today in the treatment of certain diseases, and in some countries it's still thought to be a cure for illnesses caused by blood that's gone bad. Number 3. Toxic Medicines While today we view medicine as something that you take to make you better, for much of history this was not the case. In fact, up until recently, many supposed medicines and cures were in fact downright deadly. Mercury has been used as a medicine for thousands of years, and as recently as the 20th century was believed to be the best treatment for syphilis. In ancient China, it was believed to have life-extending properties, and some alchemists experimented with it in efforts to create an elixir that would make them immortal. In ancient Greece and Persia, it was also used as a common topical ointment that could treat a variety of ailments. The toxic metal has long fascinated humans, and its liquid form at room temperature led to it being referred to as quicksilver. While we now know that it's poisonous to humans, and can lead to complications such as coughing, muscle spasms, delirium and even death, those administering it, and taking it, may have interpreted these symptoms as a worsening of their original illness, rather than the result of the supposed miracle medicine they were using. In fact, it was only as recently as the 1940s, when penicillin became widespread, that mercury stopped being given to the sick. Prior to this, the prevailing wisdom was that mercury could fight off syphilis infections, a disease which had caused suffering all over the world. The use of mercury to treat syphilis was so widespread that a common saying was, one night with Venus, a lifetime with mercury. Even more bizarrely, water tainted with radiation was at one time viewed as beneficial for human health. Prior to radioactivity being fully understood, natural radium seemed to be a miracle elixir, and companies sprung up selling radium pendants, radon water, and even uranium blankets. Such products were marketed as being cures for everything from rheumatism to impotence, and regular ingestion of radon water was thought to improve a man's vigour. This belief was not completely without some form of logic, as natural hot springs which have been used as health spas for centuries were tested and found to be radioactive, and thus a false connection was made between radiation and the possibility for improved human health. Bottled radioactive water began being sold, and water coolers were even developed, which were lined with a uranium ore, so that each day the customer could pour themselves a fresh glass of radon water, and get their full dose of vigor-enhancing radiation. Radon water even began being referred to as liquid sunshine, and radium was added to everything from toothpaste to candy. The public's love affair with radiation soon turned sour, most infamously with the case of Eben Byers, who was a millionaire tycoon who began taking Radithor, which was a radioactive medicine. He eventually died of radiation poisoning in 1932, after suffering with severe bone decay, abscesses, and weight loss, as a result of radiation poisoning. The next day's Wall Street Journal's headline read, The radium water worked fine until his jaw came off which destroyed the reputation of radium medicines permanently. Number 2. The Lobotomy Lobotomies have become a symbol of barbaric and unnecessary medical treatments, a relic from a time when the world was a harsher and less enlightened place. In the 1940s and 50s, lobotomies were considered to be on the cutting edge of psychiatric treatment, and as many as 40,000 were performed in the US alone. The inventor would even be awarded a Nobel Prize for his work, but what exactly did a lobotomy involve? In its early days, the procedure consisted of cutting a hole into the skull and injecting ethanol into the brain, which would destroy the frontal lobe's connection to other parts of the brain. However, the surgery evolved, if you can call it that, into inserting what was essentially a modified ice pick into the eye socket with the aid of a hammer. The pick would then be moved from side to side in order to separate the connections between the prefrontal cortex and the thalamus part of the brain. The belief was that severing these connections would reduce many of the symptoms of mental disorders, and perhaps even cure conditions such as schizophrenia or anxiety. While some patients did indeed see some improvement in their condition after being lobotomized, this would be at the expense of the destruction of much of their personality and intellect. Some patients even died as a result of the procedure, and many would later end their own lives. For the modern observer it might seem difficult to understand how such a barbaric treatment could have ever gained popularity. However, in a time when there were limited options for treatment, 
many doctors believe that the lobotomy was the best chance a patient might have at being returned to society and living something close to a normal life. In addition to this, there seemed to be little other choice when it came to dealing with violent and aggressive patients. The only way to prevent them from hurting themselves and others was through the use of restraints like straitjackets and shutting them away in padded rooms. With the introduction of advanced antipsychotic medications in the 1950s, lobotomies quickly fell out of favour as a less invasive and more effective way of dealing with psychiatric conditions became available. However, there are still many people alive today for whom these advances came too late. Number 1. Corpse Medicine For much of history, human remains have been a common ingredient in medicines and remedies, in a disturbing practice that has earned the name corpse medicine. Reaching the height of its popularity in the 16th and 17th centuries, Europeans began ingesting medicines that contained human bone, fat, and blood in an effort to cure their illnesses and ailments. It was thought that consuming a particular part of a corpse would have beneficial effects for that part of your body, so ground-up skull would cure headaches, blood would cure blood diseases, and fat would heal muscle aches. Ground-up mummies looted from burial sites in Egypt became a particular favourite ingredient, and it was used as a catch-all treatment that would cure everything from migraines to nosebleeds. In fact, King Charles II of England had his very own formula specially made, called the King's Drops, which contained human skull mixed with alcohol. Such medicines were popular with the rich and powerful, and the medicines would often be expensive, leading to scenes of crowds of poor people attending public executions in the hope that they might be able to obtain a cup of fresh blood from the condemned. Blood was a hugely popular ingredient, as it was thought to contain the vitality of the body, and the fresher the blood was, the better. Blood from young men and virginal young women was highly prized, and it was believed that you could gain the strength of the person whose blood you were consuming. Such practices were not unique to the Middle Ages, however, and ancient Romans were known to drink the blood of slain gladiators in an effort to obtain their vitality, and there is evidence of similar corpse medicine being used all over the world. This booming trade led to a thriving black market in body parts, and it's likely that many of the remedies reported to contain mummies were likely sourced from stolen or illegally purchased corpses from the local area. While such practices may seem abhorrent to the modern mind, at a time when little was understood about sickness and disease, it's not surprising that people turned to such outlandish methods in a desperate attempt to cure themselves. With progress in medicine, the practice began to die out in the 18th century. However, reports of corpse medicine in use exist as recently as 1908, when the last attempt at taking blood from a public execution was recorded. In fact, you might even be able to argue that corpse medicine is still in use today, for is there really that much difference between the blood transfusions and organ transplants taking place in modern hospitals and the corpse medicine of years gone past? Even now, the human body has become a commodity, with multiple reports of a thriving black market in organs existing all over the world. So those are my choices for five of the most barbaric medical practices in history. As always, let me know your thoughts in the comments below, and I'll see you again next time.